Okay, I just finished the garden tour. I think I'll grab a green. Let's see, I just picked some baby greens for my breakfast. I didn't even look under here. Oh my gosh, it's full of peppers. Isn't that cool? Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and this is the mid October garden tour. I'm gonna start in the bird garden. I'm gonna do this quick because it's windy, it's dry, and I don't want any palm leaves or anything falling on me because it is getting really windy right now. The watermelons are getting close to coming off the curly cue, the little tendril. You probably can just see it there, it's turning brown. I'll probably get them off pretty soon. Though the stems, the plant, the vine is growing, I shouldn't say it's still growing, it's not really growing, it's dying back. It's still getting some water from the mother plant. As far as food, probably not really any food. And there's another one back there. So let's kind of zip through because what I'm doing is I've been working on my deck garden, but I am slowly working on here. Oh, I should have taken a video. I can't believe how many dragon fruit we've had. And we have harvested and harvested. Look down there, it's all on the other side. And what is surprising is we're still getting flowers. Gary's coming out here at night and he's still pollinating. Look, look! My first zinnia planted from seed in tool, the new way I do it, which is now it's out here, is flowering. Look at this, it's gonna be open probably today because it's already opening. Isn't that beautiful? It's just sitting here on a chair. I wanna get flowers all through here. Here, is the mushroom plant and here's everything I show all the time. Everything's the same. I had to cover this thing I told you last time. I'm gonna have to move my mushroom plant because though each year it dies out, it's dying out because it doesn't like sun. Here's something interesting. Let's just kind of walk through. My daughter needed stevia. She came to me and I had, you know, a lot of stevia growing in the front with all the ginger. So I gave her a whole stevia plant. I just said, okay, just take it. This is where I'm gonna feed the birds and change all this up. This is my garlic that's coming back that I never picked. There were pieces in there. It's all garlic coming back through there. And that's just cuttings from my dinosaur kale, which is doing beautiful. So I gave her the stevia and she left it out her back porch and it is growing beautiful. And it's in full shade. And I said to her, you never planted it. I gave it to you in the beginning of summer or mid spring. So I left it there and it was doing so well. I just left it. So stevia really can do quite well. The doves just took off really quite well in shade. And that's the same thing with the mushroom plant. Though they're not related, certain plants do much better in shade. And it could depend on where you live and the heat and the temperature and the dryness and the humidity and all that. I'm gonna redo all this. So hopefully fairly soon you'll see all that redone. The mint is doing really good in here. The walking onions, there's just too many there. So much has to be done in here, and I'm just gonna take my time. Right now, I wanna get my deck garden done. I wanna move that bird cage and set that up somewhere else to feed the birds. Look at the papayas, absolutely full. They're leaning, see how they're leaning? So I'm gonna get this set up as far as I'm thinking right now with chairs. I'm gonna put a lot of purple, maybe the purple tree colored along the back. That's a purple tree color. There's one there, but it bent over. So if I put it there and I stake it good and don't let it bend over, it'll do really good. But the ones that are bent over, I can do a lot of cuttings off of that. That's a cutting. That's a cutting. This is a cutting. Just by trimming off a piece and propagating right off another plant. That too back there is a cutting. Those are all cuttings that are in that tall strawberry tower. Look how big they are. Going to get those out and get them in the ground. And then I'll have that growing all along the fence here. And it will act as trees for the birds, but at the same time it's food and it's for me to make compost tea. That's gorgeous. This is just so beautiful. I had this in the driveway and I just sat it there for now. Oh, I hear the equipment starting on the house. Let's see how quick we can get through this. So there's the moringa. These are the baby moringas that came up from seed this year. Look how beautiful. I'm so excited with all this. Here I need to gut all this. This is my new plant food maybe. Oh, I could trim it back really good. I could refurbish the tote and save this, but I think I'm just gonna plant new and then there's mint. Here's the other moringa, I'm not doing that good. I'll trim it back later on and just let it come back really low. See, it's coming back through here. So I can let this all start and just cut it down. I don't need it so high there at all. Even this, this 
purple, Russian purple kale, the curly kale. I'm going to cut this back and do a lot of cutting. See all these? Uh, let them get a little bit bigger and here's a good one. Just start taking them off and do cuttings and bring it back to a short plant. I don't need it so big. Oh, it's the wind. The wind, the wind. Tomatoes. Anyways, that's the back side of the papaya. See how windy it is? That's why I want to get through this. They're saying this could be days of wind and you never know. We were supposed to have bad wind the other day and we didn't. But today I can see it is windy. Ah, I can feel the dust in the air. Okay. Let's look at the rainbow garden. See how dark it is? Because the sun is still low in the sky. This is my potato mint. Oh, I cannot wait to harvest this. I don't know how much is actually growing in the second tote because I was going to move some of these, but it looks like they moved on their own. So they leaned over into the second tote. So you can see there's two totes there, a blue one and a red one. And I'm hoping a lot of it got in there and grew, but these grow little potatoes and you use them like potatoes, but the difference is they're perfectly fine to eat raw. Oh, look at the flowers. I wonder if they smell. No, no smell to them. This is a moringa. It's a little moringa tree. So I'm hoping they did move in there and you can eat them raw. So you can use them raw. You can slice them up like jicama and put them in a salad, or you can use them like potatoes and fry them up and bake them and put them in soups and everything. A lot of this will be gutted soon and I'll probably do it slowly through the winter. This tomato I'm going to leave. It's still growing big, beautiful tomatoes. Probably going to get rid of this squash plant. It's not going to do anything in here. These are hibiscus that my daughter brought me. I think they're red. And see the new leaves there? So some of them made it. I'm going to go through and see which ones made it and eventually change it out. And then this is that little two system. I'm going to blow away. Two system. Let's see what's in there. Oh my gosh. I have developed a worm farm. Can you see that? I just dropped a leaf in there the other day. Oh my gosh. Look at that. You don't need much. So many of you ask me, where do you get the worms? I don't buy the worms. Anything that's wet on the ground that you lift up pretty much is going to have some earthworms under it. It could be a rock, a flower pot. Just grab a handful and throw it in your tote. Even if you don't see any worms, if the soil is fairly good under some nice plants, grab it because there's probably going to be eggs. The other thing is we have night crawlers here and they find their way up. So it's just been fantastic that way. Yes, you can buy them. You can go to your nursery and buy them, but I've never bought worms. I don't need to. And they grow quickly. I don't know. I've read up. It takes a while for them to go. Oh, no, no, no. You could see in here, these are babies. Let's gently look at this. You can see how small they are. Look at this. It's just packed with worms. Now, this container has holes, so they can go in and out of this whole thing. They can just travel anywhere they want. But they're feeding in here, and they like it in here. So, well, let's give them some more stuff for now. But they can move up and down all they want. And that's that's exactly what you want. You want them to be able to freely move. They can go into here. This has got a lot of native soil. I can see this is really bad soil. I probably just shoveled it off the ground quickly just to have something in here. And I threw some teeny walking onions that are growing. So that's that. So anyways, I'm going to go through here. The vines are pretty much gone and done, even though they're still trying. See, that is a... That's a Korean melon. Let's get that little, what is that in there? I want to make sure I don't knock something off I want. I better leave it. Could be a larva from a ladybug in there. So they're growing, but I don't think I'm going to really get anything. But I'm in no hurry, so I might as well leave it. I am getting a lot of broccoli. Tomatoes everywhere, as you can see. They're just coming everywhere. So I'm going to leave the tomatoes. The broccoli, I'm going to trim back. The beets I'll use as I need them. There's a few beets left in there. And then the pepinos, I'm going to leave these, of course. This tote is set up, and hopefully it will go for many years, and I don't have to do anything. I've got the cobras, the black cobra peppers growing. I've got the pepinos growing. And the only thing I'm going to do on this, since this particular plant is fruiting so well is I'm going to do some more cuttings off of it. And literally, I think you might have seen me. I went into Gary's garden, took a piece, stuck it in here, and it grew. And look how big it is. There might be two in there. I stuck it some pieces. Look at that. Can you see in there? How beautiful that is. So clean that up and get that going. Okay, this is where the watermelon was. I should have... I've got one watermelon. That has to come off. See, that's all dry. 
that's completely dry. It's not getting anything from the mother plant. So that one is coming off. I'll get the Korean melon off soon. Same thing here. This is ready to be harvested. The plant is totally gone. And this is the other two system, just like the one I just showed you made out of ice cream containers. I don't think I can lift it. I don't know if I really want to right now. Mm, see, it's going to lift out. It's kind of stuck. I'm going to leave it. It'll be the same thing. There'll be worms inside there, and I can lift it when I have two hands. Make sure the green bucket stays down. Lift the yellow bucket out and put more leaves in there. This is the mustard. We use this for all kinds of stuff now. Now this mustard is from the plant that grew here, the seeds that were growing. The original plant is a purple mustard from Baker Creek, and they were a little bit deeper, but these are the seeds that came off of my plant that I grew from Baker Creeks. So they're not quite as purple, but let me tell you something, they're really good. So did it hybridize? Is it a one-time plant? I don't know. I've bought heirloom plants, and though I've only had those growing, they didn't grow completely true the second time. So I don't know what's going on. I heard that in Australia too, uh, gardening Australia. No, I think he was doing a tour and somebody brought that up that a lot of the seeds aren't growing true anymore. So I don't worry about it, it's still fantastic. My roselle, isn't that beautiful? My red roselle. Gary breaks them off and makes tea out of it. I'm not a big fan of it personally, but I love the plant and when the flowers open, they haven't opened yet because the sun is just starting to come up, so you can still see where the sun is now coming through. And here we're still in shade. So once this gets in the full sun, then some of the flowers will open, and they only stay open one day. That's the 100 tomatoes. So that will be going. This will be staying because this is an asparagus plant. I want to see next year if I really get asparagus out of this. They say that you really should grow asparagus in the ground, and that could be, and Gary was growing them. Everything was great until the rabbits found it. Something found it and started eating them. So we didn't get the asparagus we were supposed to get, so he's got to fence off areas. I want to see if you can grow it in a tote. Celery, I'm going to probably keep this celery, because I've been using this. Let me take a look at this, see if it's anybody important. Nope, and I'm going to put my phone down, because this is a telemarketer. I've been using that for breakfast and stuff, that celery. And then I've got, I think, more garlic in the back. Yep, that's the garlic I didn't pick in the bucket. I sat it in there, and it's all just making a comeback. I don't need the tag sitting in there. Okay, it's kind of stuck in there. This a little tag I made. You put that in there and get it out of there. But it's all doing really, really well. So for now, for winter, I only have a few I have to really do. I'm going to keep that going to keep that growing until that's done. The celery, I'm going to keep that. I'm going to keep that. So I've got like half. Half I'll do little by little. And I'll keep the roselle until it completely dies back. Let's spin around. My pizza garden. Oh my gosh. This has been fantastic. I've got my oregano that dropped too low. I think it wants to be higher. So I'll probably lift that up, take everything out, and lift it up and get it more towards the top. But it's still, it's still alive and it's still growing. And then I've got my sage, my different types of basil. I've got the purple and the green. This is basil. I didn't plant as much basil as you see, but it kind of reseeded. Seeds got flown around, and so it grew. This is the cutting I did. Tricolored sage. And then, of course, my tomatoes back there. I did plant that. And the peppers. It just, it's doing fantastic. Here's more tomatoes growing on this side. Isn't that gorgeous? And that I haven't gotten to yet. So that's going to be another tower. I'll put it together whenever I want. It won't take me long, but you've seen the video on this, how this is put together. This cannot, see how far back I can step, as you can see. That is all locked. The whole system, this vertical garden, is completely locked. We would have to have a major earthquake for that thing to fall over, because all those stakes are locked in, the buckets are locked in, it's all locked. So I would have to unlock it to take it apart. It wouldn't be just lifting it off. Not the way I did it. And that's the way I will do that one when I'm ready. I will interlock all that. And then I have to keep in mind that when the fig tree comes back, it will lose its leaves. Probably December or January, I'll start to lose its leaves. And then when it comes back in the spring, late spring, I know that that's going to be growing under shade where this one grew with a lot of sun. So shade plants there. Plants that are sun-loving there, and that's what I have to remember. No big deal. There's a lot of plants. I could plant stevia and different things there, too, but it gets a little warm, so I'm not sure. Or tomatoes. Tomatoes grow semi-shade and all that. There's the basil growing in there, and you know what? I noticed in here yesterday, the day before, 
all the little green things in there. I use this for covering. I don't need this right now. Sometimes I cover a new seed. Just a lampshade, see? And it's open. You get those at the thrift store cheap. And I can just, you know, when they're singles, because people need a set, I can just cover it over and protect the seedling until it's big enough. So something was in here I was covering. But look at that. That's all garlic growing in there. So I've got the basil. Oh, it smells so good. Will, will I collect some seed? I don't know. The goldfinches eat the seed. Oh, this is full of seeds, see? Where do I want basil? I won't put it back in there. I might collect some seed anyways, because you never know where I might want to move. Oh, look, look. We have a little bumblebee or a little carpenter bee. Oh, I don't think you can see him. He's checking me out. And he's gone. You know what? Just chase him away. A little tiny hoverfly. They're so tiny. Just chase him away. He's probably coming for the flowers on the broccoli. I let a lot of the broccoli go to flower so the insects can get them. This way the insects can feed on them because they need it, which means I don't get the broccoli. But I can take the small tops off like this. And I can put that in my pocket and bring that in for Kitty. She loves the top. And then, of course, I remove a lot for us to eat. So I kind of do a combination of both. And then when I let it go to seed, these are seeds. This is what the goldfinches come in. Because this inside is the seed pod. They like them when they're not quite brown. But inside, see, I don't think they've developed their seeds yet. Well, one-handed is hard to do. But, you know, see, there's, there's a little seed in there. See, that's the seed. That's a soft seed. You see that right there? Let's see if we can push it out. If you can see that there by my thumb, that is a soft seed. And that's what, um, just, just leave that. That's what the goldfinch is like. They like it soft, but they will eat it even as it dries. They just like really small, dainty, soft seeds. Nothing different through here. So I don't think I'm even going to bother walking through there. Everything's the same. I've got the tomatoes growing down there in the, those metal chairs. Whoa! Yeah, it's going to be really windy, they said. And wind bothers me, because wind can drive fires. We don't have any fires in our area. But you never know. That's why wind bothers me. Okay, so we got the tomatoes all growing there. I can literally just walk. But you know what? Now that I'm here, I'll walk into the front yard real quick. Yeah, you know what? Let's walk into the front yard. Nothing new. And then we'll turn around and just do a walk straight back. Everything is the same here. I've got... Um, the squash still growing, tomatoes still growing, my finger lime. I've got purple tree colored. I've got that great big geranium growing because I feed it all the time with my compost tea. I don't want to be standing here because like I said, if something comes down and they come down all the time, that's the palm tree. So I'm gonna hit with the palm leaves. Look at the pine cones coming down. So this has got a cocozel, I believe over here. Let's see. Yeah, oh look, 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 look. Beautiful. It's a whole bunch of small ones in there. Okay, so let's go through here. Tomatoes growing. So all in all, everything's... I haven't done anything. This is like a no-work garden right now. The ginger, it is all doing really good. Soon as it starts to turn brown, I will harvest that and start taking them out. Right now, I'm going to leave them. Oh, do I have planters I can put there? I've got a new planter system I'm making. So I'm going to... Leave them right now until they turn brown. And as it dies back, then the tubers get all the nutrients. They're storing everything. Let's keep walking. They store everything in the tubers, the rhizomes, I should say, for the ginger and the turmeric. And that's the best time to harvest. Yet, you can harvest them at any time. But to store them, you want them to start to die back. The leaves will all go brown, and that's when you dig them up. Wash them up, clean them. Freeze the ones you know you want to keep. Store the ones in maybe a flower pot with some potting soil. Just keep it cool and lightly, lightly damp. And it will store all winter and then you can plant them out in the spring. Isn't this beautiful? And we'll just walk. I've got carrots growing in there. I've got baby walking onions I've been collecting and putting anywhere I can. More tomatoes. Tomato came up in that bucket on its own. Probably a tomato fell from there. It's growing in there. Here's my compost tea. My lettuce is gorgeous. I keep picking. I covered it with tulle. I'm going to open this up. I keep picking and it keeps growing. That one bolted, which is perfect. I want the seeds. Here's some more baby lettuce growing. That's a real quick job of tulle, but you know what? It works. This is walking onions. That was garlic chives down on the bottom there. Strawberries, I want to move those around. There's my tomatoes and green sorrel. These are leeks. Baby leeks. I planted those with the one little lettuce in the center. 
green Swiss chard. I haven't planted anything in this one yet. There's not even any soil. But as you see, I'm starting to throw things in there like an old eggplant. And just, you know, this is what you do. Just start throwing it because all that's going to be my soil. I don't even have to wet it if I don't want to. Just store it. Keep it. More lettuce, peppers, walking onions. Walking onions back there. Green sorrel. Oh, there's some lettuce up here I'm debating. I may end up yanking out that celery. I don't need it. And actually using that for something good. Maybe I'll move it. I don't know. Then some more purple tree color. This is just some moringa that got moved here. And there's a pepper plant down there. One little pepper. Oh, here's more peppers. Let's see what I've got. They got burned, see, from the sun. I'll have to take them off. That one went, is starting to turn. Keep in mind your peppers, the black ones, those aren't ripe. When they're black, they're unripe. They go from green to black, and then they'll turn red or red-orange. That one, I'm not sure. Probably going to turn red garlic chives. Got to collect some more garlic chive seeds. See, these are the seeds. Look at the tomatoes. Oh my goodness, I've got big ones in the back there. Look at that. And then up on top, and I pick all the time, but we pick as we need. This is the Malabar spinach, and it has made it to the top. Isn't that cool? But see it's starting to turn yellow? We're starting to get cool nights, and it really likes it really hot. It's still growing, but we'll see what happens. And then this is the black cobra. See, they go from green to black. That's what most of your peppers do, to red. When they're red is when they're ripe. And see, they're still flowering. Isn't that cool? Okay, just some lettuce, celery. There's another pepper there. There's another pepper in the front there. There's the red one I've got to pick. And there's a, a pretty green one that's coming up now. Eggplant, we had eggplant last night for dinner. I still have eggplant to pick off. Purple tree collard. That I'm going to leave there. I like that. It's tied to that cement thing Gary put up. And then this is squash. There is cucumbers. I don't think I'm going to get any. I have an idea on how to do it where I can get them, but I think we're just too cold at night. So I would have to change this up a little bit, and I'm thinking of changing it up to bring some heat in the, to there for them. Even though they do get heat on the wall, there's more cucumbers. This is squash, and there are baby squash in here. Okay, there's one. There's some squash. So this is a yellowish squash. See that? There's a squash there. There's a squash there. So there is squash through here because I've been picking squash. And then this is the papayas. I still don't know what I'm going to do with them. They're still in the bucket. I feel like grabbing the whole thing, finding a place and dropping them in a hole. And if they make it, they make it. Those are my potatoes here. This is the ones I kept in the house too long. And I wasn't sure how they were going to do. Some of them started to go bad. So I put them in that bucket with a lot of leaves and stuff. That's why in kitchen scraps and the squash just loves it. And we'll see what I get out of it. And then I'm going to separate them so I can really get some more potatoes growing. And these I haven't really set up yet. These are just here. But I've got some beans or peas coming up. And there is some squash still starting to come up. Same thing in here, Malabar spinach, because we grow a lot of Mal Malabar spinach. There's some peas coming up there. This is just leftover celery and Swiss chard. See, I'm not even done yet. I've been throwing kitchen scraps and stuff in there. So I'm still working on things. And then let's see. Uh, this is, oh, this. I have been picking tomatillos like mad. Have not frozen any yet. I still have them from last year, a bag frozen. And they look beautiful. I sliced up some of the bigger ones the other day. See, I've got some big ones. They're on the top. And I breaded them and fried them, and Gary went wild over them. So I guess I'll be doing that periodically. Not all the time, but a little bit as a treat. So I can fry them just like you would fry chicken. That's what I was doing. I was frying some chicken, and I fried that. Then I've got the tomatoes. We'll see how this goes. And then nothing, whatever was in here died. Oh, yeah. This is the zucchini that a root, see the root I showed you last time? That's a root. The tree root got in, oh see it did it again. As long as there's dirt there, see what it's done again? It came back. I've got to dig the dirt out. What it's doing is the tree is killing whatever plants in there. It wants the water and I don't blame it, but it goes in there and it kills the plant. Even though it's draining and everything is working perfect, they put something out in their roots so they can kill the plant so they get all the water. So I'm going to have to dig that out better because I didn't, I knew that what happened, but I hadn't looked at it for a few days. So now I see the root went back in. More squash, nothing here, hadn't done anything here. And I don't think I'm, let's see, don't need to show you the papayas because there's nothing new. They're still there. 
And then we got papayas all over back there and nothing, well, nothing new. The same old papayas. You want to see a whole thing on papayas? Look at the last one. Look at this. The chairs are disappearing. I've noticed that. Remember there was like 30 chairs here or 20 chairs, 20, 30 chairs. Little by little, I'm finding places for them. Oh, those Adirondack chairs. I'm going to have to do something and just stick some totes or something on them. They are not comfortable to get in and out of. Okay. There, let's see, nothing has been done there. And then there, a lot of the squash is trying to make a comeback. It's getting a lot of really good sun. And if I add in a whole lot more kitchen scraps into them, I probably can get some of them to come back. I've got some cucumber back there too, but the thing is, I think the cucumber is pretty much done, even though my daughter picked some in her yard the other day. She's a little warmer, I think, than us. So I'm not sure if that's going to make come back. But we've got the tomatoes, we've got the garlic chives, we've got in front there and the pink flowers. I've got geraniums. So we'll see. That's the whole thing of papayas that came up in the compost. That tomato lost a lot of its leaves. I thought there was a hornworm. I couldn't find it. So there could have been a hornworm. You know, sometimes they hide the hornworms and then they come out when you don't see them. It's a geranium in the front of that tote there. So we'll see what happens there. The pond, the same old, same old, nothing has changed yet. The sage that was in front of the pond has kind of fallen over and died back. It's actually, it's a type of sage. What it is, it's chia. And it grew massive, so big. And now it's kind of fallen over. I think I'm just going to trim it all the way back. I trimmed a lot of it off. And eventually, when I have more time, I'll get more and more into all of this. I'd like to really make this look pretty. He put this together and I don't know if he's doing anything else. So if not, I'll just start sticking plants. Here I don't want to put totes. Here I want to put maybe gray buckets and pots and cement planters. It'll look nicer. And then some nice chairs like I painted that chair, kind of a multicolored tan and brown. So it kind of disappears up against the wall. All right. This is another project I'm getting very close to doing. And I've told you what I'm going to do here is chop all the Swiss chard back, collect the seeds, throw them back in there, and I'm going to layer this whole truck bed right now in colored buckets. That is my goal. It doesn't matter when I do it, and it's getting close because the buckets are here now, but I'm going to do that so I don't have to do anything with the soil. When Gary filled this up, he filled it up with a lot of sand. And it's very hard to me, and I don't like the soil being that hard. The good way would be to, well, take it all out or take a lot of it out and redo it and I'm not going to do that. So the best way is let the earthworms and everything redo the soil itself like mother nature. So I will chop that all in there and just drop it. The seeds will come up again because that's all red, the green and red Swiss chard and the green Swiss chard. A lot of that will come up in between the buckets and then the earthworms that will be in there eating all that matter out will change the, the composition of the soil on its own. I don't have to do anything. And then watering it, all I have to do is water the buckets. I don't have to water the entire truck bed, like make sure I water, water, water. I just water the buckets and it'll stay damp underneath. Anything growing in there will go underneath. You saw the earthworms on that two system container. They'll go underneath and see how they can go in and out big holes and I don't have to worry about any tree roots because this whole thing is off the ground so that's my plan here and then I've got my apple trees I want to trim them back so they're a single stalk up and then I think periodically I think I might start sticking in really good fruit trees here because these are just you know seeds I, I grew and I don't know what they're going to grow they could grow into a beautiful tree, but there may not be. Oh my gosh, look at that. I hope you can see it. He's just hovering in the wind. A second ago, that's a, that might be a Cooper Hawk. He's just picking up the thermals of the wind and he was just staying in one spot. It was beautiful. Sorry about that. I gotta do a nature walk is what I gotta do. Then I can talk about that stuff more. So here, I don't know what they're gonna grow into. I really don't, they just grew from my compost. <laughs> so I brought him out here a while back and I planted him and they got kind of topped a little bit by the deer because the deer will come through here and then they'll eat the top. Look how windy it is. So the deer will come through and top my plants. They don't touch nectarines, which is good. They haven't touched anything in my garden. They used to come in here and look around, but they haven't touched anything, but they do like apple trees. So, it, which is fine, I may try to graft them. Now, if they take, that's why I want to trim them up 
and get them trimmed really nice, the apple trees, I can try to graft onto them. I actually know where there's an apple tree I want to go get some cyan from. But if it doesn't work, then I take them out and replace them with good trees, trees that are really going to give me a lot of fruit. I could put the papayas here. And I've thought about that, but I don't know if I really want any more papayas. I would like to have something different. You do get tired of papayas. Look at everything's blowing in the wind. And then here, I think these tomatillos are pretty much done. And I've been picking them up and collecting them. I will get those today and fry them up. The little pepper tree is doing good. The pepper tree, my little pepper plant. See, it's getting blocked from the wind and the peppers don't like blowing in the wind. And this is why this has been growing now into its second year, because this is a wind block. So when it comes up the canyon and it blows, it's not chilling out and going into its demise. It's actually living and it's been producing even into the winter. So I want to set something up a little bit more shelter for it and then I know it will do really good. Lettuce is coming up. Look at this. It's lettuce time. I've got walking onions. I've got papalo still growing, but it's going to go to seed. Once it goes to seed, the plant will die back. But this plant, this big one, grew all last year, which was inter interesting all through the winter. And being that the totes, I can walk over here for a second, have dropped down. See how the soil has dropped down? It sheltered the plant. Look at the trunk on that thing. And this thing grew all winter, so he had his popolo all winter, which was amazing. And I don't know if it'll do it again, if it will stay more as a perennial than an annual, because normally it's an annual, so we'll see. And then yes, these got attacked by hornworms. I kind of left them. I mean, they're gonna disappear soon. They don't usually hang around hornworms in the winter. So the tomato plants are still alive, but I want to gut a lot of this anyway. So I figured we'll let them do what they want and the birds will come in and pick some off. There's a broccoli or some sort of brassica back there. More lettuce coming through here. Now this I planted. I never even refurbished anything. Look at that. This is just walking onions. I just came through here and stuck in a ton of baby walking onions in here. Just little bulbs. And now they're growing. I've got a lettuce in there. And this is celery. And I've been picking this. They're like, they're not quite microgreens. They're baby greens. I've been picking that and using that when I make our eggs in the morning. Now I'm making with the eggs and greens and maybe I'll put a little chicken in. After it's fried up real quick on a frying pan, I put in a little beef bouillon. You can get those big cartons and leave it in the fridge. Just a tiny bit for taste. My gosh, it's so good. You can throw in whatever you want. So that's it. So I've spun you around. I hope I've done this fairly quick. Because like I said, I want to get in because it's really windy and just kind of keep an eye on things because wind is not really good because you've got power lines around. And then you've just got to make sure everything's okay and plus things are flying. So with that, I am going in. Hope it wasn't too quick, but you know, I think you got to see everything. And then I can work on the deck or work somewhere else. Yeah, isn't that beautiful? I really like that setup. That setup with the tomatoes and the cucumbers I grew. The cucumbers got pushed out by everything else. I kind of wish they didn't, so I'm going to have to keep track of that next year. Get more cucumbers growing along there and make sure that it's only cucumbers because tomatoes and tomatillos take over. But all in all, I'm very happy. Never ran out of food. Still harvesting, and we harvest as we use. So I kind of leave everything on here, unless I'm going to freeze. And I do freeze. I don't can. Did that many, many years ago once, but I just, I do freeze. I prefer freezing and sometimes drying. So I think that's it. I'm running in houses, this wind is blowing. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Oh, this is gorgeous. Let me get some broccoli in for Kitty. I still brought you some broccoli. Look at that, it's dark in the house. Sun is coming up. I mean, that's enough. You know what, I'm gonna make the eggs and you can have some of that, okay?